Okay, we're still continuing on with how to see how <clears throat> Peter Peter's text and the meter interact to say something about Roman history. Peter's focus being temple building as distinct from Paul who's tracing out the Roman emperors themselves and the rise of what would become apostate church. But when we're going to do Peter, we're going to have to just treat this as 68, 69 AD, year of the four emperors. And of course, the Greek prefix there is good. Yeah, it's good that Nero's dead, and it's good that finally Vespasian takes power. So this is Vespasian. Vespasian rules 10 years. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine, ten. Vespasian dies here. He's also called the father of his country, so Peter's making a play on that. And then he's deified, first by Titus, his successor, and then by Domitian, who comes after Titus, and Titus only rules for two years. So this is 79 AD in our parlance, and in our parlance, um, that's also the year of Pompey going under when Pliny dies, Pliny the Elder. And so right there is 79, 80, 81, and you'd be saying 82 there. You could also just take it all the way to the end because it depends on whether it's mid-year, so you're rounding. This is when Domitian changes the name of the temple for Vespasian to the temple of Vespasian and Titus, having previously named um, the temple after Vespasian and himself cutting out his older brother. So Domitian is in power at this point, has been in power since 81, sometime during 81, okay? So then you got Domitian, okay, who dies in 96. So we're gonna say that that's 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, all right? Because we've got a two-year variance between Roman AUC and our BCAD system, according to Paul's chronology, which Peter is tracking. So we're using Paul's chronology, because Paul doesn't backdate to BC. He dates with Christ's birth, and that's his Anno Domini. Okay, so we're going to call this 88, all right? Domitian is still in power until 96, okay? So that's 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. And this is when Domitian dies. He's assassinated. Now, <clears throat> since Paul was using Adas to play on Telematos, and at each time you got the Ada and Telematos, Paul is marking an emperor who dies and the new emperor undoes what the previous emperor did. There's a question in my mind whether Peter's playing on that and doing the same thing by marking not the Ada, but the Epsilon here. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Okay, because this is where Domitian dies. And it is a mercy, that's what this word means. Because at that time, Nerva takes power. And what Nerva did was pardon everybody who wasn't guilty of serious crimes. Presumably, John being exiled on Patmos by Domitian would not have been considered a serious crime. If John was still alive, he would have been pardoned. The church fathers have all these stupid stories about John at like age 95 or 100 running out of a bath because a heretic walked into the bath. Obviously, John didn't do that. Obviously, the church fathers were idiots. Nobody should respect them. It's, it's a crime and a stain on Christianity that we treat the church fathers as being spiritually, you know, positive. They were idiots. We should hate them. Or at least learn from not to be like them, but we never have. 
Still, the Greek word here is mercy, and it was a mercy that the mission died, and it was a mercy that that Nerva took power, and he took power just during that that word mercy. By the end of the word, Nerva is dead, and after him comes Trajan. So this is 98 A.D. Okay, when all the stupid Justin Martyr and Papias and all those other ding dongs, Clement of Rome in particular are alive. Clement dies soon after this. Clement dies in about a hundred. Okay, John had written the book of Revelation right here. Just about like really here. Luau. Lo. Luau. But it's concatenated into one syllable for the meter. Okay? So this is where the book of Revelation had been written in our AD terms. John himself dates the book of Revelation as 91. Again, he's following the same dating convention as Peter and Paul, and he's basing his, his own meter in Revelation 1, 1 through 3 on the Pauline text in Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. Specifically, the 91 in Ephesians uh, 1 4. He's dating it as 58 years after Christ's death, 126 years after I forget what the event was, and then he, he finally bases it on Mary's own birthday, which is really a shock to me. And I showed all that. You can get it online, it's in the GGS series. Okay, so. We come here, this is the end of Revelation. This is the this is getting into the last year of Domitian. This is getting into his death year. And these are the two years that our boy Nerva ruled. So Trajan steps in here. Now the word here in Greek, anagenesis, means rebirthing us. And Peter's using a lot of participles because that's dramatic Greek. Peter was a big fan of Greek drama. And in Greek drama, you drop finite verbs and you start using participles and nouns. So that's why he's being real dramatic here. Okay? So <clears throat> many people considered the, you know, the coming of Trajan, who comes in after Nerva, because Nerva had adopted Trajan, as a rebirthing of Rome good the five good emperors is what they call it okay nerva being the first of them all right that's what the roman historians or the romans themselves called that period the five good emperors including nerva trajan comes in here trajan adopted a policy of executing christians there's a lot of stuff between him and pliny um, letters between him and pliny which are cited by roman historians to help us understand the period, because there's not a whole lot you can find out about Trajan. But the idea of don't ask, don't tell was adopted by Trajan, but if you do tell, then you have to be executed. And that's what the letters between him and Pliny, in what's in Pliny is called the Pangericus, and also Epistolary. And if you want, <clears throat> I just found the book in Latin, the original Latin, and I can give you the link. It's in archive.org or Gutenberg. I forget which. You can't you can't search the Latin. It's just a graphic, you know, uh, a graphic online print, which is kind of sad. <clears throat> but at least you know if you know your way around the Latin, you can find the the citations, because they're cited all over the internet. These letters from Pliny. Anyway, so we're starting Trajan right here. Okay, so this is 98 AD. So we got 98, well, 98, 99, 100. Then you treat this as all one syllable. 101, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then right here is when Trajan dies. <clears throat> this is when Hadrian comes to power, which 
is kind of ironic that our boy, you know, Peter would do it this way. Because Hadrian was already having arguments <clears throat> and fights with the Jews in Syria. He was in Syria at the time the Trajan died. And about three, three days after Trajan died, he actually counts his own imperium beginning in August, I think it was August 11, 117. Okay, so Peter, you know, I, 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 it, it, this is, looks like it's Peter's own wry wit, okay, that he uses eleos where he does, because he doesn't have to use these words in this order, to depict the death of, of Domitian and the rise of Nerva. He uses this for the rise of Trajan, and he's using this because Yerushalayim, see the play, okay? Ye, Yerushalayim, Christ is Jewish. <clears throat> so he's using this to depict the rise of Trajan. Trajan's, of course, I'm not Trajan, but Hadrian. Hadrian's going to be the guy who destroys um, Huzi Wetz's Jerusalem. The other thing that's really awesome about this particular wording order is that in Paul, this Ada right here is the Ada in Telematos, and that's the first Telematos in Paul. And that's exactly where he marks the death of Trajan and the rise of Hadrian. So Peter is very clearly marking his text and the words he uses to track even to the Ada in Telematos of Paul. Now that's really important, and I know it sounds arcane, but let me show you why it's important. Everybody and his brother today, and ever since, you know, 2,000 years ago, have been arguing over what is accurate scripture. Do we really have the words of God? Are they preserved? And of course, the whole King James Only movement is dedicated to destroying the Greek and Hebrew texts. That only the English is right, and God's so stupid, he couldn't keep the text until 1611 when suddenly the King James only translators who didn't believe that their text was inspired, well, they're suddenly writing inspired text. Honey, Peter right here is tracking to the first telematos in Paul, which tells you two things. Number one, that this text in Peter, we have exactly preserved the way it was originally written. And two, the same thing is true for the text we've got in Paul. Do you see how important meter can be to textual criticism? Proving that yes, we do have the right words of God and all those scholars who worked really, really hard, underpaid and overworked at making sure we had the correct text in the 1800s because that was one of the most important developments in the entire history of the world is that all these scholars got together in the 1800s to collate all the Bible manuscripts we had and make sure that we have the right text. Yeah, it's so right that Peter is tracking the Ada here to Paul's Ada in Telematos, in the first of Pinon Anaphora. Okay? To track the same event which is Trajan's death and Hadrian's accession. Because what Hadrian did is he undid everything Trajan tried to accomplish. Actually, Trajan was, was having second thoughts about what he was trying to accomplish. Hey, Trajan tried to you know, do what Alexander did. He exp Trajan expanded the empire. One of the first things that Hadrian started to do when he took office was to cut back on the eastern provinces, cut back Rome's control. So he's reversing what Trajan had initially done. But Trajan was actually thinking about doing the same thing when he died. Okay? And all of this you can find out online from the Roman historians. And if you want to, you can look here. You can just click here or click here and go research the links yourself. That's how I'm getting the information I'm telling you. There are independent university sites, independent Roman historians who are writing about this time. All I did was read these links you know, that I found on the internet that I linked inside the Ephesian stock. That's how I know. So that's how you can know. And why is that important? Because this Ada here is tracking to Telematos and Paul. So on the one hand, you can argue that Peter's not being as 
satirical and biting as Paul. What he is doing instead is he's making sure you know he's tracking to Paul. Okay? At the same year when Paul's writing the word, the Ada in Telematos, that's 117 AD, because this is all one syllable in Greek, yet. Okay? Because the I was used in Greek to, to have the Y sound. Okay? And there you go. You want proof that the Bible is really from the Word of God? That God really had a hand in doing this? Or that God really showed these people, you know, matured them enough so they could write Scripture and really communicate God's own intended will of what, what you should know? Honey, you couldn't ask for better proof than this. So Peter is, is, is taking a more broad brush approach. He wants to make sure you track to Paul. And he's even making this Ada track to Paul at the very same juncture, Hadrian's accession, accession right here. All right? You couldn't ask for better proof than that. All right, so we got Hadrian starting right here. So that's 117, 118, 119. 120, 121, 122, and maybe you say 123, depending on the variance in the the year, because because the accession, this part here, this is taking place in August. Okay, so it's 122 syllables, but it ends up being late in 122 or early in 123, depending on you know how you want to round off the time. All right. Peter's saying, get out of Dodge beginning then. Why? Because this is when the, the Jews were, um, you know, revolting. They were petitioning Hadrian to let them rebuild the temple. Hadrian didn't want them to rebuild the temple. He did say no, but they didn't listen to that. They kept agitating. And finally, that culminated in him having to, this is one of the chief characteristics of his reign, is that he ended up having to war with them and he ended up raising Jerusalem. Uh, that's what culminated in the Bar Kokhba Rebellion in 132 to 135. And then Aeolia Capilina, if you look here, was finished by then. But Hadrian ends up being dead by 138. Okay? Very remarkable guy. All right? And, you know, he was very, I, I have to assume he was anti-Semitic, but you can't say that, that he was unprovoked. The Jews were really nasty during this time. All right, they really were, and I imagine that a whole lot of Christians were among them. Christians were obnoxious during this time. This is the time that the stupid Justin Martyr and all the other first century, you know, guys that got started in here but this is Clement of Rome is writing during this time and he obviously has no knowledge of Revelation so he didn't even get the book so you know Clement of Rome was not a holy guy he was not spiritually mature he was a jackass anybody who likes Clement 1 and Clement 2 those people don't know how to read they just don't the guy was making a bald bid for power. He used scripture, just quoting scripture, quoting scripture, quoting scripture. See how smart I am. He wouldn't know scripture if it bit him. And he snubs John. It was just it was a horrible man. If that was really, if Clement I was really written by Clement of Rome, Clement of Rome was a jerk. He was not Clemens, which means, you know, even-tempered. He was not even-tempered. He was a jerk. Nobody should like him. All right, but the same is true of all the other people who start coming out of the woodwork during this period. All the other Christian writers, okay, they were horrible, and all you have to do is read them. And if you look into these links, you can go to the Ephesians Repar Stock, search on Church Hall of Shame, and read them yourself. Is this brain out just saying this and brain out's opinion? Go read them yourself. Read in your own words the lies they make up about the Bible, the lies they make up about the Apostle John, the lies they make up about Christ, how almsgiving pays for sins instead of Christ. I'm telling you, these people were nuts. But don't take my word for it. Go read it yourself. If people actually read the Church Fathers, they would leave the Catholic Church in droves. That's all they have to do is read the Church Fathers to know how stupid and disgusting they were. 
Anybody who has anything positive to say about the church fathers should be hung up. You just put them on a hangman's noose. Because they're either stupid or lying or both. Read it yourself and find out. Okay, see if I'm the one who's, who's all wet. Okay? So this is why Peter's saying get out of Dodge. It's not simply because the emperors are going to start embarking. Because see, this is what Trajan's policy was. Christians should get the death penalty. It wasn't just Trajan who was doing this. See, this, wait a minute. This is Trajan's time. And then that policy of Trajan was continued by Hadrian. So this is a time of persecuting Christians. But it wasn't active persecution. It was, hi, if you catch a Christian and he confesses to being a Christian and he won't recant, you kill him. That's what's characterized for this time. Okay, well, if that's true, then you should get out of Dodge. And that's what Peter's trying to warn you about. It was a resurgence of the Roman religion and they were trying to get rid of Jews and Christians. Why? Because the Jews and Christians were being obnoxious. They weren't representing Christ. They're, they're, they wouldn't know the Bible if it bit them. So if you did, you got out of Dodge. That's what this period is about. And that's what Paul was saying and that's what Peter is like reinforcing here. But he's using clever ties to Paul. All right, so that buttresses, you know, two things. First of all, we know Peter's, this is really Peter's words, right down to that syllable there highlighted in black. And we know that we got Paul's words right, highlighted down to the atus, in telematos. And we know that we got the meter therefore right. And we know therefore that we got the meaning right. Because this is all, this is all prophecy now. This is all future of Peter's time playing on Paul's own prophecy. And Christendom knows nothing about this. I don't know why. Why didn't they count the syllables? That's what all the ancients had to do to memorize scripture. Why are we following the conventions they followed? That's isagogics. You interpret scripture in light of the time in which it was written. Well, in light of the time in which it was written, how did people learn it? That's a factor. And see all this information that you wouldn't know just from the words alone. See how Peter's words are actually tying to history. And therefore they have a very different meaning. Okay? In whom we, you know, from whom according to his great mercy. Yeah. The mercy of killing Domitian and the mercy of Nerva coming to power. Although Nerva taxed the Jews. But he pardoned a lot of people. Okay? And then you got Trajan, who, you know, well, we got to kill the Christians if they confess themselves. But hello, then you got out of Dodge and you didn't confess yourself. And as long as you kept quiet about your Christianity, you could stay in the empire and be a Christian. Why would you want to be an obnoxious Christian and wear it on your sleeve? I'm sorry, honey, I don't wear, hi, I'm a Christian, uh, as a t-shirt or a hat outside this house if somebody needs to know something about Christ believe me God will send that person to me it's happened before I've been grocery shopping when people have come up to me and asked me questions about God I've been at parties where somebody takes me aside and asks me a question about God and I didn't say anything to advertise my Christianity so how did they know God told them see so it wouldn't be wrong to just be quiet and do your job. That's what Peter's letter is going to be about. Just be quiet and do your job so they won't have anything nasty to say against you. And he's doing that in this verse at the time when he foreknows through God, of course, that that's exactly the opposite of what Christians and Jews are doing. They're making big stinks about their Christianity and their Jewishness. They're refusing military service. Okay, they're refusing military service. They're refusing to be involved in the, you know, the society. Oh, we're Christian. We're better than you. You're dirty pagans. We don't want to have anything to do with you. Well, hello, then how is that going to make the name of Christ attractive to find? Okay. Yeah, paganism is wrong. But do you beat people over the head with that fact? You have to state it when it's relevant, and then you move back to, you know, normal human life. 
and you wait for them to be ready to hear more. That's what Christ did to the woman at the well. He spoke to her more sharply than he did to the apostles. He gave her information he wouldn't give to the apostles. He was nasty to the apostles, but nice to her. So there's a time to be nice and a time to be nasty. This was not the time to be nasty, but that's exactly what Christians are doing, which Peter's letter is going to warn you against. And therefore, for the nice Christian, get out of Dodge. Divorce yourself, distance yourself from the obnoxious Christians so the name of Christ will not be shamed in the eyes of the pagan. See how apt his text is? You're remembering that you are going to be resurrected in Christ. See, this was that I said Peter Zosandi, Anastasios, Jesu Christu Necron. That's what you remember inside your head while you're getting out of Dodge. And then God knows where you're going. Ideally, you're led to wherever you go because of God. And see, you have a rebirth. You don't live the old life anymore. You don't have to concern yourself with human approbation. But you also don't need to be obnoxious. See? Anyway, that takes us to 140. And that takes us to the end of Hadrian. And I haven't figured out how to cover verse 4 yet, so I'm going to stop here.